all over the room shout the name of Jesus. Shout the name of Jesus. For the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. There's no prophecy without Jesus. There's no prophecy without Jesus. Hey, there's no him. There's no me without him. Hey, there's no me without him. There's no me without him. Because of Calvary, he shed his blood. They hung him high. They stretched him out. Hung his head. For me, he died. But that's not how the story ends. Press in, press in, press in, press in. church my whole life but it was just recently in the pandemic that my relationship shifted and I don't understand how 600 million people got COVID and I believe 300 million died of it they shut our churches down and we complained about the churches not being open then they finally opened it back up and I just can't understand how we are not in a place in our relationship with God where we don't need to be pumped or pride. We literally need to count it an honor and a privilege to be in the presence of God. And do I have any mature saints in here that can say, I don't need the musicians. I don't need the prophet. All I need is the presence. I've grown in my walk spiritually that I don't need nothing to pump me or make me feel good. The fact that I'm still breathing and moving when others didn't make it is enough for me to praise God. The fact that I was guilty and yet he still covered me. The fact that I got in beds I didn't belong in and yet I never caught a STD. The fact that I was guilty of the crime and I got my freedom. The fact that I've been through traumatic things and I'm still in my right mind when I should be in a straitjacket in a mental hospital somewhere. That's enough. I dare you to just have a flashback and remember. I know y'all got titles. I know you got position. I know you've been, in, you've been in church all your life and speaking in tongues. But all of us got something that God delivered us from. And your story may not be my story. And you may not have the background I have. But we all got something to thank God for. Can you just have a flashback and remember where you was before you got the title? Can you remember where you was before you got a position in church? Can you remember where you was? I know you, I know you oily now, but can you remember where you was when God snatched you out? Uh, men of God, Pastor Mickles, um, can we put our hands together and honor the man of God? and his wife. I've been to St. Louis, but I never preached in St. Louis. So this is my first assignment. And um, you said I had liberty. Yes. And so I hope 
that that liberty applies even when it comes to you. Because before you, I don't know if you caught this. Um, can you turn me up so I can hear myself? Either turn that down or turn me up so I can hear. In the, in the office, um, you said, I have a nine to five and I said, not for long. Before, now there's a lot of preachers and pastors that have to work because we just have to work. But there are some of us who are called to ministry full time. Not only ministry, but entrepreneurship for you shall own many businesses and wealth shall be in your hands and it won't come from a nine to five, sir. So get ready for a transition. Let me tell you my personal testimony of being shifted off of a job into ministry and entrepreneurship. I was working for a company for three and a half years and all of a sudden they called me into the office and said they were letting me go. And I was devastated at the moment because I didn't understand. Like, wait a minute, what you talking about? And it wasn't until my itinerary shifted People started buying the books more and buying the um, my apparel and uh, booking me more and doing um, empowerment things. And I sat back and I said, God, there was no way I could do this and still show up to a nine to five. And it'll get rough and rocky. You'll know the season of transition because you're already irritated and frustrated on the job. And so it's only going to get rockier until God pushes you. And I hear God saying, do not hesitate because as a man, you are a provider. A man is supposed to be a provider and you are a provider. And so you have this, this thing in the back where I want to make sure I'm taking care of my wife and my household, my children. I want to make sure whatever the ministry needs are that I have a backup plan. But God says, you're going to trust me in this season like never before because if I take you off, trust and believe the provisions are going to be made. Not only will you just come off a job and just have something here and there, but wealth shall be your name. You should not be broke. Nothing about you should have to go paycheck to paycheck. You should not just have barely enough. And I hear that you have angered some people in the region for there are witches and wizards and warlocks that try to pray against you because they've had a glimpse in your future. See, prophets are not the only ones that can see. Demons can see as well. We just see from different realms. And so there are some witches and warlocks that you have upset it in this territory for there is a high-ranking territorial demon that you agitate every time you open up your mouth. And so they are praying against your prosperity because your prosperity is really another level for the kingdom because of what you're going to do. Because you do a lot with what you have, but imagine if you had even more. And so you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. And so I speak to your wife even, even now because if my husband come home and tell me that he quit his job, I, <laughs> I got to go to the throne. You know what I'm saying? I got to go to the throne and make sure he heard God but do not do not do not worry this move is a God move this move is a God move provisions will be made because obedience is better than sacrifice he won't let you starve men of God because you haven't let his people starve you fed his people when they were hungry you clothed them when they needed clothes you paid people bills you fed their babies you put gas in their cars and he, listen sir your labor has not been in vain Some people don't want to work because they feel like this is a get rich quick scheme and trust and believe uh, this ain't it. Tr trust me. I made more money in the streets than I ever made in church. I never knew what it was like to be broke until I gave God a yes. I had real job experiences once I gave God a yes. This ain't for no rich. But there are certain people that God will elect and select to do his business, business full time. And you are one, sir. For the kingdom has need of you, sir. They have need of you. Don't be surprised at the very hotel you've worked in that one day you'll own. I don't know if 
real estate is something that you were interested in, but you will have many buildings for different reasons. For I see many buildings and keys in your possession, sir. For you shall not be a renter, but an owner. People going to want to work for you because they you're going to be the best boss they ever had. Hallelujah. Can we bless the Lord for this man of God? And then while you're clapping your hands, can we clap our hands for Jesus? Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Now, I'm going to shift really quick because where there is a prophet, there is a Jezebel. A Jezebelic spirit that tries to hide uh, in the room. And see, Jezebel church folks is not red lipstick in a bodycon dress. Uh, a Jezebel spirit hates prophets. Uh, because if you recall, it was Jezebel that tried to kill the prophet Elijah. Uh, where there is a Jezebelic spirit, mean if there's a Jezebelic spirit, that means that there's a prophet in the room. And where there's a prophet, there's a Jezebelic spirit. And so the blood of Jesus against every witch and every warlock, every sniper, every hidden demon in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against the spirit of distraction and every demonic plan. Every intercessor, I need you to speak in your heavenly language. We bind every demonic demonic altar that has been set up against this prophetic summit in the name of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against thee. 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 And you gonna get delivered or you gonna get out of here. Every witch, every warlock, every wizard, the blood of Jesus is against thee. I bind the spirit of distraction, every spirit of Leviathan, every spirit of Jezebel. Your plan is null and void. Every demonic plan and plot of the enemy. That came to interfere with the flow for these next three days. Mm, may you be burned by Holy Ghost fire in Jesus' name. I loose the angels, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, to all four corners of the room in the name of Jesus. Shekinah glory, you're welcome in this place. Jesus, you're welcome in this place. Have your way, Yahweh. Have your way. Yeshua, the old saints used to get excited at the name of Jesus. They said, if you call him, he'll show up. Jesus, 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 Jesus. you're welcome in this place. Jesus, Christ the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, the anointed one, the Messiah, Emmanuel. Adonai, Redeemer, Teacher, Rabbi, Holy One of Israel, Bread of Life, Wonderful Counselor, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Everlasting Master, Prophet, High Priest, Chief Cornerstone, You're Welcome God, You're Welcome God. I'm talking about your God. We so is that your God? 
you should get excited about your God. Listen, I know we want to hear about checks, cars, and money, but I still get excited about the name of Jesus because I had more money than a little bit and I was suicidal. I was ready to blow my brains out. It wasn't until Jesus, Hannibal Korobosai, came and snatched me out of a pit. Some of y'all in the pit right now, you don't need no word about no check, baby. You need to find out how to keep your mind in the name of Jesus. Jesus, call his name. I'm talking about the Lamb of God, the Son of God. Woman of God, the problem is we come to church and don't even know Jesus. No, 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 no. It's not about no performance. It's not about no performance. It's about Jesus. The Rose of Sharon, the Balm in Gilead, the Prince of Peace, the Waymaker, the Healer. The deliverer. Talking about God. If I told you it was three millionaires in the building, you'll tear these blue seats up. But when we call on the name of Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, yeah, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, the Son of Man, the Savior of the world, the Alpha and the Omega, that should be enough. I told God I understood my assignment. I don't take engagements, I take assignments. And one of my assignments outside of leading people back to Jesus is preaching Jesus. <laughs> because we have seen too much flesh in the pulpit. We, we see too many gimmicks and games and want to tickle your flesh and preach out of your own people, preach out of their own personal opinions. And I've been through two, two I've been to too many churches and I'm like, where, 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 where Jesus? Give me Jesus in this season. Your life will shift if you just get to know him for real. Not the God of your grandmama, because big mama is the reason some of y'all in church. Your granddaddy, your mama and daddy and them kept you in church. You just church with no change. You got religion with no relationship. But if you want to see change, get to know the changer. So can we put our hands together? Because the harder you praise, the better I can prophesy. <laughs> Some of y'all need Jesus to come see about your children. You need Jesus to come see about your marriage. You need Yahweh up in your house. Some of y'all got insomnia. You can't sleep at night without popping melatonin and sleeping pills. You need Jesus more than anything right now in this season. Can we praise him? Come on, basketball season, football season is coming. And y'all turn up more for them than you do for the Savior. The devil is a lie. You may have your seats, but as you're going down, can you just give him a shout of praise? Come on, Mount Zion. Come on. Come on. Come on, Zion. Come on. Thank him. Thank him. Because they don't know what it took for you to show up tonight. Thank him that you in your right mind. Thank him that after it's only midweek and you've been through so much hell, it's only Wednesday. Thank him that you ain't lost your mind. Ah! Now... Now, Pastor Mickles, I'm all for a prophetic gathering. But see, folks tend to come out when they hear the prophets are coming because we treat prophets like psychics. We want to, ooh, ooh, what they going to say to me? <laughs> Our emotionalism is invoked and we hope to hear a prosperity prophecy or get an instant instruction concerning our next move. Unfortunately, we have entered into a time that the Bible says is itching ears. And that's why we sit up under so many false prophets and you don't understand how their churches are full when they got scandal after scandal. And they're so far away from God and yet the people won't leave because there's something about them that tickles at their flesh. 
And so when we hear that the prophets are coming, a lot of prophets, false prophets that the Bible had taught, told us about and warned us about uh, 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 has given this false sense of what prophecy is. But if you really read your Bible, the prophets of old never came to talk about camels and donkeys and coins and dollars. They came to give uh, uh, um, warnings and um, came to tell people to get their house in order and all of that. And so uh, uh, I, I apologize. <laughs> If I didn't come to make you feel good. But I paid a cost for the oil that I have and I can't play with God like that. I refuse to insult God with a gift that he's given me. And what do you mean that you've paid a cost? Before I became the pastor, before I became the prophetess, I was a little girl who was raped at eight years old by my babysitter son. At 10 years old, my father, who is schizophrenic and bipolar, tried to drown me in a bathtub. When I was 12, I was raped by my neighbor. At 13, I had sex one time and I got pregnant by a 27-year-old pip. At 14 years old, I gave birth to a baby that died in my arms. I started stripping in the strip clubs at 14 years old. And when I decided that this ain't really what I wanted to do because I was a little girl in a grown woman's world. And so I went back home to Compton with my grandparents who made me go to church. And I was in church all day, y'all, every day. It was too much church, 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 church. And I figured if I was going to be in church, I might as well do something that I enjoyed. And at that time, I used to love to sing. And so I joined the youth choir. And so I was singing for Jesus. Y'all, I'm 15 years old. I'm back in school. I got a summer job. I'm living with grandparents and I'm doing well. And while I was in church singing for Jesus, my choir member introduced me to prostitution. My choir member introduced me to prostitution and not only did she introduce me to prostitution, but she introduced me to cocaine as well. And at 15, 16 and 17, I was stripping, I was prostituting, I was doing drugs and selling drugs with my choir member from my Baptist church. Uh huh. And then at 18, if that wasn't good enough, I was in the strip club and some porn stars came in there and she said something to me. She said, if you think you're making money now and you ain't seen nothing yet, I made this amount of money doing these movies and I think you should too and at 18 years old I didn't realize that if I joined the porn industry what would happen later on in my life if I wanted to become a wife or a mother I just heard coins 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 and so I started doing pornography at 18 years old and one thing she did tell me was that I was gonna make money and I did y'all I was able to fly around the world I was flewed out before flewed out do you hear me I was all over the world I've been with basketball players and football players and rappers and I was living, I was driving everything except for a Bentley and living in high rises in Los Angeles, California. But it reminds me of the scripture. What profit is it to a man to, to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Because I was balling out of control, y'all, and I was dying on the inside. I was an alcoholic. I overdosed on ecstasy and cocaine three times and almost lost my life. I was suicidal every time I got sober, so I stayed high. And I told myself because sometimes we are our worst enemies and so I told myself there is nothing more that I can do there's nothing more that I can be so I might as well go hard if I'm gonna be a stripper if I'm gonna be a porn star I might as well be the best one out there and so I was going around y'all and I was traveling to, but I was a hippie Christian yeah. what's that some of y'all sitting next to one you, you know the ones that act like they know Jesus on certain days when church is in and then when they leave their life is full of hell they don't represent Christ at all but they show up to church I was still going to church even though I was living a contrary lifestyle and so I was stripping I was doing pornography I was prostituting selling dope I was involved in gangs and all of this type of stuff but I still stayed in church and then at 19 years old I got flown to New 
York and this man y'all he locked me up in a basement and he beat me and he raped me and he was a man from the islands and he chanted voodoo over me and told me yeah, I'm gonna kill you and I was just 19 years old in New York away from family and friends but because I was a hypocrite something in me said pray Danielle and I prayed like I never prayed before that's why you gotta keep your mouth off of certain folks because even though they not living right in front of you you don't know what seeds God is planting on the inside of them because even though I would leave the strip club and come to church God was still planting seeds on the inside I would leave the church and get in the bed with a man that didn't belong to me but God was still planting seeds on the inside and so I was in the basement y'all and something said pray like you never prayed before and I said Lord if you get me out of this I'll change my life for you just don't let me die how many people have said that prayer before Lord you get me out of this I'm done I'm done and he get us out of it and we run back to it like a dog returns to his vomit but sometimes God will allow hell to hit you so hard to where he know that he know that you'll never go back and so I was in a basement at 19 years old woman of God saying Lord save me three days later I get excited when I tell my testimony so y'all gotta excuse me because I'm reminded of the miracle working power of Jesus and so uh, I was in that basement y'all and three days later after I prayed his homeboy came to that basement looking for him but he opened the door and found me and I was all beat up and bruised and he looked like he saw a ghost and I said help me and he helped me get out of the basement y'all and I left New York and I went back to LA and I never looked back so when I tell you I didn't come here to St. Louis to play I paid the cost for the oil on my life do you hear me I came to first before I give you the prophetic word that God gave me when I came into your region first let me encourage a little girl who was molested that you can be healed baby because I was and God is no respecter of persons the same thing he did for me he's able to do for you and those of you who know about somebody that ain't living right if you ain't gonna pray for him shut your mouth because you don't know that that prostitute may be God's prophetess you don't know that that homosexual may be the next bishop you don't know what God is doing in somebody's life so let me encourage somebody that's going through a storm all you gotta do is give God a real yes and if you don't he'll find you because when you are many are called few are chosen and when you are chosen you ain't got no choice When you're chosen, you ain't got no choice. You think I came out the strip club and thought I wanted to be a pastor? The devil is a lie. You thought I came out the porn industry and thought I was gonna be in somebody's pulpit? The devil is a lie. But my whole life is prophetic because if you look at the Bible, those of the, the ones that God used the most had a shaky past. They had a shaky start, and yet they they turned out to be the most powerful people in the Bible, the most talked about people in the Bible. David killed a man for a chick and yet he was one of the most anointed. Paul was a murderer and yet he was one of the most anointed. The woman at the well was a city girl but she was one of the most anointed. Do you hear me? Be encouraged on tonight because it don't matter how you start. You never know where God will take you. You want a prophetic word? What he did for me he'll do for you. shy. What's at the head tends to flow to the body. And the first person he brought into the region is somebody that's free. Anybody in the room that want to be free? It's freedom in here. It's freedom in the room. don't you feel bad sis cause you got a lot of bodies on you that's alright I was all out there I was doing all that and yet God still blessed me with a husband do you hear me you don't care about your reputation God will still take you to the nations do you hear me all you gotta do is give God a real yes anybody in the room you wanna see a miracle you wanna see blessings I dare you to give God a yes you only know what you need him to do for you right now in this season open up your mouth and just say yes lord all right now that i got that out the way this is the prophetic summit ain't it is it the prophet am i in the right house this is a prophetic summit all right y'all want a prophetic word y'all want a prophetic word talk to 
of me. I talk back. Come on now. All right, here we go. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Get your house in order because in this season, it ain't about houses, cars, and money. Give me Jesus. Teach me how to keep me, keep my mind. How to go shy. Show me how to stay pure amongst the perverted. Tell me how to keep my faith when I feel like I'm failing. That's my prophetic word. I'm not in a season in my life, horrible shy. I'm not in a season where I need you to play with me, play with my mind, and play with my heart. Somebody you sitting next to is ready to take every pill in their medicine cabinet. Somebody you sitting in front of is ready to blow their brains out. Somebody sitting behind you is ready to live, leave a dear John Lair, get in their car and just drive until it stop. In this season, you don't need no house. You don't need no car. You don't even need no check. You need to repent and get your house in order. God, I need you to renew my relationship with you because I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I'm failing. I'm in the midst of perversion and I'm still trying to stay pure. God, I'm trying to do right in a wicked generation. Don't tell me about no house right now. Keep your house while I get my house in order. That's the only house I want to hear about in this season. Let me tell y'all something. I just came out of one of the worst seasons of my life. Let me tell you, I've been in ministry 12 and a half years, but I've only been pastoring one year. And then when I gave God a yes to pastor, pastorialship, all hell broke loose in my life. And it wasn't no check that kept me. It wasn't my house that kept me. It wasn't my BMW that kept me. But it was my knees that kept me I got on my knees I got in the words I got on my face so I didn't lose my mind <laughs> and in this season because life will blindside you life will knock you down do you hear me life will feel like you in the ring with Mayweather Get knocked all upside your head. It'll blindside you. And not because you in sin. Because let me just tell you a secret. Some of y'all that live in sin and got double lives, you might as well expect hell because consequences come with it. You can't be mad at God because you living wrong. You, you can't be mad at God because you dancing with the devil. But let's talk to those who like, but I've been dotting all my I's and crossing my T's, God. I've been praying for my enemies. I've been paying my tithes. I've been praying for my enemies, God. I've been on my face. I didn't turn down my, my plate. I'm fasting. I'm praying. How could you let this happen to me? How could you allow me to go through this? Some of the storms you are facing now, men and women of God, it's not because of what you did wrong, but it's because of everything you did right. Can I tell you about a man named Job who was minding his business, living for God, taking care of his family? He had wealth and everything. He was a real servant. The Bible says he was an upright and just man. He was a righteous man. And yet all hell hit his life. And some of y'all are in a storm, not because of what you did wrong, but because you're living right. The devil has come to sin you like weeds and so that's why I could not come here and play play church I had to come here because some people are on the edge ready to take themselves out somebody in your church Pastor Mickles is ready to commit homicide and suicide do you hear me and so don't 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 come here on this night maybe tomorrow maybe Friday they'll see a check in the mail but right now I see deliverance I see healing in the name of Jesus, I ain't got time to play church, Mickles. Tell me how to keep my faith when I feel like I'm failing. 
tell me how to hold on to ministry when everything is falling apart. Tell me how to hold on to God when everything around me is telling me to let go. The Bible says the devil goes to and fro seeking whom he may devour. And unfortunately, it's devouring season. He's trying to devour your children. He's trying to devour your money. He's trying to devour your marriage. He's trying to devour your ministry. He's trying to devour your mind. That's why in this season, the warfare has been so intense. If you notice at the beginning of 22, everything was all right. Then a couple of months ago, it's like all hell broke loose. Season of sadness came. Season of depression came. Marriage just started ending. Money got funny. Kids start acting crazy because he's seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says that the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. That's why it feels like you can barely come up for air when you try to catch your breath for one thing. Here comes something else trying to drown you again because he knows that he has a short time so he's working overtime to try to consume you. The Bible says that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So you think I got time for a feel-good message when the devil's trying to take me out? Tell me how to stay alive spiritually and emotionally while the devil's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. He's trying to steal from me. He's trying to destroy me in every way. Destroy relationships. How to bullshy. Steal money. Kill dreams. Teach me how to stay alive. I don't need no prophecy about what's, what's coming in 10 days. If it ain't about my freedom. If it ain't about my healing. If it ain't about my kids being okay. I don't care about none of that. Anybody ever been so low that you just need a breakthrough? Forget the bank. Can I just get a breakthrough? You want a prophecy for all you prophecy crackheads that be watching online? You itching for a prophecy. You shaking for a prophecy. You want a prophecy? Well, the word of God is your most accurate prophetic word. First Peter 1.16. Be ye holy, for I am holy. There go a prophecy. Prophesy Romans 12 and 1. Show me how to present my my body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is my reasonable service you want a prophecy Philippians 2 5 tell me how to let this mind be in me which was also in Christ Jesus prophesy Psalm 121 1 and teach me how to lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help prophesy first John 2 15 and show me not to love the things of the world prophesy James 4 and 7 teach me how to submit to God resist the devil so he can flee you want a prophecy you want a prophecy you want to find out how not to lose your mind. You want a prophecy. You want to find out how to still believe Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, even when the doctor gives you a bad report. You want a real prophecy? Well, that's what I got on tonight. And it's in the word of God. I promise you, it's not in man, although we are the mouthpieces of God. We, your, your real prophetic breakthrough is in the word. It's in your mouth. It's in your belly. But the problem is, we get so broken that we don't even know how to work the word. We so broken sometimes when we don't even know how to open up our mouths to decree and declare. Some of y'all crying yourself to sleep at night some of y'all so broken you don't even know how to pray the words won't come out of your mouth how can I prophesy over myself when I'm constantly in pain anybody anybody honest enough to say 
Listen, I'm in a 911 state of emergency. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to lose it. <laughs> and tonight was for me <laughs> because what we finna do, we finna share. We, 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 we finna shift because my favorite part of the service is the altar call because not only do people get free but we give hell a headache because what was meant to stay bound gets broken it gets broken all that hell in your life when you hit the altar stuff starts to break up off of you and so we gonna shift play something softly this is called blow your trumpet ministries well in the bible the watchmen will blow the trumpet as a warning of danger I came to blow the trumpet. I wish you had a shofar in here. I, play, I came to blow the trumpet to let the, the demons of darkness know that they are in danger. In danger for losing another soul on tonight. In danger of losing another body on tonight. In the name of Jesus. And so anybody in here that feels like, listen, the only prophetic word that I need on tonight is how to get my house free. The only prophetic word I need is how to keep my kids at the feet of Jesus. The only prophetic word I need is how to get out of a bed that I don't belong to. I need a prophetic word concerning my health. I need a prophetic word concerning my mind, my ministry. I'm not here about cars and clothes. You're going to get that anyway because God is a God that provides. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. He is a way maker. So you're going to always have that. I need to go deeper God the altar is open come on this is a prophetic shift the altar is open the enemy been trying to kill steal and destroy everything that I touch the enemy has been playing with my mind. The enemy has me bound to addictions, pornography, alcohol, masturbation, sex, gambling. He got me bound to the very thing that God himself is trying to snatch me out of. The enemy is playing with my heart because it stays broken. The enemy keeps sending counterfeits in my life. I need, I need God. The only prophecy I want to hear is, Lord, I'm finally free. Free me. Free me. These ain't the only ones. There's a shift coming. There's a shift coming. Mm. There's a shift. There's a shift. Can we lift our hands? Where's your singer? need somebody singing because there's a shift that's coming. I've been fasting and praying all September. Spirit is sensitive. Can you begin to sing prophetically? Shy. What you've been carrying tried to kill you. But I decree and declare that you shall live and not die. 
I'm asking God for a supernatural strength for you because the weight that you've been carrying has become too much. And I see the enemy trying to give you a nervous breakdown. Trying to play with your mind and even your health. What was sent was meant to kill you, but God said it won't work. I can hear you saying it's too much. It's too much. I can't take no more. I can't take it no more. And even in the midst of your calamity, I hear your prayers for other people. Because you will intercede on behalf of other people and you'll see God move for them. But you're saying, God, what about me? Hey. Because you know he's real. You see the move. But in this season, you need him to move for you like never before. I decree and declare that the demonic plan against your life is now canceled in the name of Jesus. Your blood pressure is being regulated. The migraines is ceasing in the name of Jesus. You're tossing and turning at night, but I decree and declare that you shall sleep. That you shall have rest. That you shall rest. Every tormenting demon, the blood of Jesus is against thee. As a singer, I need y'all praying. Every tormenting demon. Every spirit of witchcraft is cancelled. Hadabu Korobo Shai. Y'all don't sit there and look at me. Go ahead and pray. Hadabu Korobo Shai.
Honorable Shy. Can we stand to our feet? I need y'all praying. Jesus, 
is better than a dollar. Being whole is better than the car that I drive. Woman of God, uh, 
the wife or the husband of the pastor, uh, I won't say tends to get overlooked because they don't really get overlooked. But I feel like the partner to the prophet is a very important job to have. And because you got to see the tears that are cried behind closed doors, because you have to encourage when his spirit is empty, because when you wanted to cuss church folks out for playing with your man and you held your peace, because you have sold into ministry, God has not forgotten about you. Your husband is about to go up, but so are you. Not just for his stuff and with his stuff, but for your own individual things because you have your own desires, you have your own prayers, you have your own things that you want God to do for you. And it's about to happen for you. Know, folks be wanting to marry a preacher and you don't know because my husband tell everybody I'm crazy <laughs> because prophets are very unique people <laughs> we're peculiar people in ministry take hits that we don't allow the people to see but our spouses have to see it they have to wipe our tears we have to take they money to cover some ministry stuff too. And we tend to overlook the role of the partner to the prophet or the partner to the preacher. But God has not overlooked you, woman of God. There are some things, some desires of your heart that you are about to see. Hi, You, sir, uh, your anointing is greater than just in minstrels. Your anointing is greater and you try to hide your gift behind those keys or organ or whatever that is. But there's a word in your belly, sir. There's a word for young men that'll listen to you. They'll listen to you. You have influence that can penetrate this generation. And there are some doors that will never be opened until you obey the voice of God. Because there are some desires and some prayers that you need answered like yesterday. And you trying to figure out what's the hold up. The hold up is you. You ain't going to miss out on nothing. You ain't going to lose nothing. But you're going to gain a whole lot if you just obey God. Sometimes we try, try to hide behind one gift when we have many. And we think that we're giving enough by just, I'm going to play or I'm going to sing. Or, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work the camera. I'm going to work this. I'm going to do. But then, but, but, but God said, I want all of you. moment you give him all, you're going to see your life go up in a way that you can never imagine. Because the enemy wants you to keep your mouth closed. He don't care nothing about you playing this organ. You're going to become a real threat when you open up your mouth, sir. See, the devil don't care nothing about your shout. You can tear the whole church up. He is not moved by that. The moment you start obeying God, that's when you get a target on your back. And the more, as long as he can keep you shouting but disobeying, you all right. The moment, I don't care if you show up to the revival. I don't care if you show up to the prophetic summit. But the moment you obey the voice of God. I'm sorry I didn't have $10,000 checks to give y'all tonight. Y'all forgive me. But I'd rather you be healed and set free. 
There's a whole lot of rich people who are suicidal and depressed. And there's some middle class people and lower class people that got more wealth and peace than ever before. And this season, hear me and hear me good. Because the, the way God uses me in the prophetic, he shows me end time prophecies. If you ever follow me on social media, you'll see that I've done things called unpopular prophecy. Where God showed me things concerning the land and they came to pass. God will give me dreams and he'll show me things concerning this country, other countries. Showing me rappers, showing me all kind of stuff. And so hear me when I say, the world as we know it is going to get worse. We keep saying it's gonna be a change, it's gonna get, no, 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 it's not. The Bible must fulfill itself. And if you don't believe in the Bible, just look up at the times and the things that are happening. It's only gonna get worse before Jesus comes back again. It has to. Oh, y'all didn't know Jesus is coming back again. Oh, y'all forgot? He coming back again. And he's coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And so in this season, I can't play church. Help me to keep my soul right so when he blow the trumpet, I don't miss it. When the rapture come, I won't be left behind, but I'm going up with my God. Y'all still get excited about heaven? You still get excited about your name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life? I still want to go to heaven. I still want to walk the streets of gold. I still want to sit at the right hand of the Father. Anybody excited about heaven? That's still a destination for me. Because I didn't went through hell on earth. I ain't trying to go through there all eternity. I want to go to heaven. So when he blow the trumpet, who coming with me? Open up your mouth. I want to go with Jesus when he called my name. I want my name written in the Lamb Book of Life. God, put my name in the book. God, call my number. God, please don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. For there's a place called hell with gnashing of teeth and utter darkness that I do not desire to go. God, in this season, keep my flesh in subjection. Allow me to decrease so you can increase. Because I don't want to miss you when you come. I don't want to miss heaven. So I say that to say that the world as we know it is only going to get worse for the spirit of murder has been released. <laughs> spirit of famine has been released. Uh, spirit of infirmity with all these sicknesses and diseases have been released. Revelation, I know a lot of saints are scared of that part of the Bible, but you need to read it because the seals have been broken. The seals have been broken. And so in this season, <laughs> I got a beautiful house in Atlanta. We got about three cars in the driveway. My husband makes six figures and none of that gonna get me to heaven. When I had my nervous breakdown, none of that helped me. It was the altar. <laughs> it was the altar. <laughs> it was my prayer posture. <laughs> I had to lock myself in my prayer room so I could get my mind back. And there were days where I couldn't even pray. I just said, Jesus. With the tears rolling down my eyes, Jesus. My son in the other room, Jesus. My marriage going through, Jesus. The money is funny, but Jesus. Doctor said the, the results was positive. Jesus. They stabbing me in my back. Jesus. They left me for dead. Jesus. They laughing in my face. Jesus. I don't know if I'm coming or going, but Jesus. 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 
Jesus is the only thing. He's the only thing and the only one that's going to keep you. When heartache and heartbreak is your portion, when the ones you love leave you, when the ones you help hurt you, shy. when the ones you'll take a bullet for is the one standing behind the gun, Jesus is the only one that's going to get you through that season. And so I beg you, I beseech you then, brethren, to, to get to know Jesus like never before in this season. Stand to your feet if you were blessed on tonight. Woman of God, I don't know you. Horrible shy. Are you from St. Louis? You live here? Do you travel? Okay, you're going to travel a lot more. Your gift is going to make room for you, but not just your singing, but you a preacher. Horrible, horrible shy. You a minister. You, you minister, you don't just sing. Some people just sing, they sound good. They have a gift of singing, but you minister. Literally, the reason why I said just sing prophetically because you, you have a prophetic voice and you have authentic oil that can shift atmospheres. You are atmosphere shifter. You oily. And you a millennial because you don't look over 25, to be honest with you. Yeah, you, you look like a baby and you a millennial. And see, this generation, we, we, we threw y'all away because some of y'all kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You know, generation X, Y, Z kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but there are some which we call a remnant. <laughs> the remnant of God is in this generation. And you're one of them. And you are going to be a strong voice for your generation. Can you guys put your hands together for Pastor Mickles? I don't think you understand that when leaders put on conferences and revivals or even Sunday mornings, the hits that they take for your freedom. The devil literally attacks the visionary. And so we don't know what level of warfare that you had to go through, man of God, to birth this baby. And so we honor you for taking the hit on our behalf. We honor you. And I wanna show honor tonight by sowing a $100 seed and everybody in the room that can stand with me to sow into this man of God, because ministry calls, this building calls, and his vision calls, his oil calls, his yes calls. And so everybody, most of us got bundles and nails and everything. We spend that in the nail shop. Can we spend it on God's servant? Everybody, can you put the giving on the screen for those online, even those of you who are watching online tonight, if you can stand with me. I really want 20 people to stand with a $100 gift or more, whatever you can do so we can sow into this vision and into this ministry. The ways of giving. I believe in sowing into good ground because when you are spiritually mature, you receive the whole Bible, even the parts you don't like. And God loves a cheerful giver. And I'm happy about giving into this man of God, into this ministry. Those of you who are standing, if you have cash, just go ahead and bring it here. But if you're giving by way of Cash App, PayPal, the website. I need 20 people in the room. So the reason why is because he had to pay for plane tickets and hotels. And to pay these musicians, they ain't free. And we don't want him to take a spiritual hit and a natural hit as well. And so we wanna make the burden very, very light for the man of God so he can continue to do this. And so 20 people online and in the room or more. 
that can stand with us with a hundred dollar gift on tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about my future because my future is in God. And I want y'all to stand to your feet and clap for yourselves. Stand to your feet and clap for yourselves. Give yourself a round of applause and let me tell you why. Stand to your feet as we're about to be dismissed. The reason why I say give yourself a round of applause is because we have entered into a season of a great falling away where there are many people who are leaving God and leaving church. And the fact that y'all showed up on a Wednesday night to church, I salute you. Because you can be many other places. There are many people who are in the woods praising the moon right now. Energy burning sage, bowing to Buddha and everything else. Leaving God, saying that there is no God. For there has been a great falling away. So the fact that you still found enough strength and enough love for God to still show up in, in his house, I salute you. Give yourself a round of applause. And while you're clapping, I want you to clap for Jehovah Jireh. I want you to clap for Jehovah Nisi. You can do better than that. Let's thank God for Prophetess McCord. Come on. So listen, I need those of you all sewing that hundred dollars to move this way now. Come on, move out of your seat. Come touch the basket. Get to cash app, dollar sign, blow your trumpet ministries. Amen, amen. You wanna, you got to sew where you wanna go. Amen. Hold the music. Usually, we have uh, assessments. We didn't do any assessments. Amen. I allowed Lady Mickles and the Women's Convention to hold <laughs> uh, assessments this year. I need you now to get $100, get 75, get 50, stand and move this way expeditiously. Let's go. Blow your trumpet. And I know it'll be right on time. Amen. You don't have that 50, you don't have that 100, you're getting 20. Amen. You can't pay for deliverance. Some of you ought to thank God. Amen. The next thing is we often talk about, I don't want church as usual. So when somebody cuts through the weeds, they don't give you a didactic message, three points in the shout. Y'all sitting there like, oh my God. Amen. You need to come out of, out of what you in. Amen. And when you get comfortable enough to flow in your oil, your anointing, God can use you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. You need to be delivered. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And when we learn how to appreciate the various gifts, the variety in the kingdom, God will bless us the more. Amen. Amen. You don't. You all not have to be preached to high heavens to be shouting on your head to give. To be made irregular promises. But in 10 days, God's going to do it. You ought to sow because I, I'm expecting God. I, you hear me? I say I'm expecting God. Glory to God. Amen. Everything that he said. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for everyone that have given and had a heart to give. We pray, God, that you would bless like only you can. Do what you do best. Stretch, extend, bless in the name of Jesus. Thank you for increase, overflow, and surplus in the name of Jesus. I thank you, oh God, for doing the exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think in Jesus' name. Amen. And I know Listen, tomorrow night, I'm tired, but I feel the presence of God. Listen, 
you got comedy on you tonight. You want you got something to say, Lady Mickles? All right. <laughs> tomorrow night. Somebody shout tomorrow. Prophetess Latara Tillman is in the city. Her feet is already on the ground. Tomorrow she's coming. She's going to preach. She's going to prophesy. I want you all to be prepared. Amen. We starting at 730. Even if a hurricane dropped down. Amen. We want to. <laughs> coming through the rain. Coming through the snow coming through the storm. Thank you so much. Amen. On Friday night, somebody shout Friday. Archbishop William Hudson III will be in this room. Amen. And there's people that are calling already for rooms. The powerhouse is coming. Amen. And this Joyce Meyer convention is here. Amen. So while they churching on downtown, we churching over here north town. Amen. I would that you would pray that God would do exactly what he wants us to do in this hour, in this room. Uh, I, I thank God for what he's doing and what he's going to do. I believe God. Then on Sunday, somebody shout all day Sunday. All services will be held at the Blow Your Trumpet campus. Amen. On the south side, 4746 Virginia. Amen. We're going to be there at 11 o'clock a.m. Amen. For a prophetic uh, release and then 6 o'clock p.m the prophetic emergence service. I believe that God's going to speak to his people. Those of you all that uh, are believing God to speak to you expressly, it's not too late. Amen. There's a prophetic law, Kiana, that says you ought not prophesy when you're tired. Amen. I'm a little tired. Amen. But I do feel the prophetic winds of God blowing. And he's concerned all the way about you. Tell your neighbor there's nothing that you're going through that he's not going to do for you. Tell your neighbor everything that you have up before him, he's going to visit it. My God. My God. Sheila, good to see you tonight. You look like your mom and Amber tonight. Listen, uh, Amber looking like you. You looking like your mama. Um, Elisha is asleep. His servant, and we're going home. God bless you tonight, Mother Bullock. Looks out the window and says, there's danger out there. We're surrounded, Angie. Elijah wakes up out of his sleep and says, oh, God's got that. Father, open his eyes that he might see the chariots of fire. I, oh my gosh. I just wish I had four people to shout, God is about to open my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prophesy to your neighbor and say, God's about to let you see the angels' armies. So, hey. Tell your neighbor that's some invisible assistance. Yes, that, that's some angelic help. I feel like preaching right through here. Tell your neighbor, God's about to open your eyes. You hear me, Craig? Jerry, I said God is about to open your eyes. You may look defeated, but tell your neighbor, God, God's gonna. Sometimes you gonna, you gonna have to wake up out of your sleep, and you gonna just have to start decreeing and declaring some stuff. Tell your neighbor, even while you're laying down, God's moving on your behalf. He's not gonna let the sun go down, and what He told you not come to pass. We got to get out of here. The preacher don't preach the word of the Lord tonight. The word of the Lord tonight is repent. Let me just tell your neighbor, repent so you can see the release. My God today. Tell your neighbor, if you stop and turn, God can show you what your eyes haven't seen. Ooh, what your ears haven't heard. My 
I just need one person to walk around this building. One time, one person. One, just one, can I get, thank you. Thank you, Sister Timmons, thank you. Come on, come on, come on, just keep walking. And I want you to walk around this one time. Come on, ta 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 ta. Oh, shundo, ikando boko. Mandanada boboko, shai. Come on, Timmons. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Ho, 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 ho. Stop right there. I want everybody to open your mouth and shout glory right now. I hear the Lord say, I'm bringing some walls down that was standing in your way. That one walk was a proverbial seven. God say, this is your seven days. And I'm getting ready to bring the wall down that has stopped you from getting the breakthrough. I wish you bring the music. Am I Sunday? Somebody just shout glory. Hey, glory. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. And be healed in your body. Somebody say, God's getting ready to touch. All right. The heat gun came on around here. Yes, God. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, God. Hey, hey. Yo, mama, mama. Shut that up, boho. We break the arms of the enemy. We bind him and his works. We rebuke him. Atata. And we send him back to the pits of hell. Oh, ooh. Tomorrow night, 7.30, be in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Forget all of my mercy. Hallelujah. 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 ready to go tomorrow night so in down south asia uh, uh they call it blue lights my mother grew up in mobile the county called pritchard don't do it because if you do it, it something gonna happen we got to go we got to we do time is well spent it's disrespectful to preach and prophesy over the preacher and the prophet but vita uh uh in in pritchard they call them blue lights and you can see blue lights. You know, here we see blue and red. But Angie, when you saw red lights only, it's danger. Like it's something bad done popped off. Blue lights is just normal police, but when you see them red lights down south in Pritchard, something done happened. Bring that down, hold it, follow me, hold it, hold it. Don't push me, don't, don't bully me, but, but. I was sitting there in the seat Monday, and God is my secret judge. I start seeing Nikki red lights. But when you start walking, ma'am, right here, when she start walking. This is not, I don't perceive for her, but when she walked, this is what I saw. 
Because when I saw the red lights, I started rebuking the devil here in my seat. But when she walked, it's like I heard the corner goes the other way. Somebody just shout, death is getting ready to pass over my house. Just, 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 just. Yeah, that's